Hey guys, welcome to the first edition of the Monday Morning Tennis Rant in 2024. And so far, this tennis season has been so exciting because so many players are back from injury. Osaka, Anisimova, Raducanu, Kerber, and of course, Rafa. And let me start off by telling you guys that unfortunately, Rafa has pulled out of the Australian Open. And I watched every single one of Rafa's matches and I made a video. After his first win, I was so excited because he played extremely well. He played even better in a second round and he played really well against Thompson. That's a match that he should have won. He had easy match points that he missed balls that he would not miss ever. But that's what happens when you don't have match confidence. He's rusty. And then, of course, the big scare was that he got a injury timeout and started touching his left hip and I thought oh no you know this is it he's done he hurt himself again in the same place it's over but thankfully it's not the same injury it's a micro tear in the muscle it's not the tendon so Rafa will definitely be back when I look at the calendar I have my own ideas of which tournaments Rafa should play when Rafa was younger he would actually play the clay court season which starts very early by the way in Argentina and Cordoba, then goes on to Buenos Aires and then Rio. Acapulco in Mexico used to be on clay, now it's on hard court, and Rafa used to play those tournaments there. Even was a tournament in Chile that Rafa lost a match that I will never forget to Zeballos in the final. So in my mind, I'm thinking, why not play some clay matches? Because the ultimate goal for Rafa is to do well at the French Open and to do well at the Olympics. But I don't think that's what's going to happen. He's probably going to play Acapulco, which is a 500. Then Rafa's going to play Indian Wells, and he's probably going to pull out of Miami, a tournament that he should have won on five separate occasions, a couple of tough losses against Djokovic, one tough loss against Federer, one loss to Davidenko in the final. So that's a tournament that Rafa should have won at least one time. And I don't think it's going to happen. My big wish because I live in Florida, is that Nadal at least once wins the Miami Open. What happens after Miami is the clay court season. So Rafa is probably going to play Monte Carlo, Barcelona, Madrid, Rome, and then the French Open. Now Rafa still knows how to play tennis. He's playing extremely well. The big question mark is the body. And there's a reason why you don't see any 40-year-old guys playing in futures, in challengers, and especially not at the elite level. What Jimmy Connors did at the U.S. Open in 1991 at 39 years old, making it to the semis is something that's so rare and so spectacular. The only player that I can see doing results like that close to 40 years old is Novak Djokovic. For some reason, he has figured out a formula where he's playing like a 25 year old and his body doesn't seem affected. But when he does have some physical problems like he did at the United Cup where he lost to Dimenauer, he had some arm issues. Djokovic always seems to have arm problems, but according to his coach Ivanishevich, it's a very minor thing and Djokovic is ready to play. Now Rafa's body on the other hand has taken an absolute beating and it's even a question whether he can finish this season. I will take Rafa at his word that he is not sure whether he's going to stop after this year or not, but I'll be honest with you guys, every time I watch Rafa play now and he's in one of those brutal rallies where he has to run, I'm scared that he's going to hurt himself. Just like his parents were scared in Wimbledon where he was playing against Fritz in 2022 where they were begging him to stop and Rafa just kept going and going. He's the ultimate fighter. He's going to keep going until his body completely breaks down. So the dream scenario for me personally would be if Rafa can do the Sampras because Sampras had the greatest retirement in the history of tennis. He won the US Open after playing a subpar year for his level. He lost early in Wimbledon to George Bostel and nobody thought that Sampras had anything left. People were writing him off and then comes in and plays unbelievable at the US Open, beats all the top players, takes out Agassi in the final and calls it quits. That is the best retirement not only in tennis, in all sports. And that is my dream for Rafa. If he can get the gold medal at the Olympics in Paris on clay, I think that Rafa should call it quits. Because if he keeps going, the inevitable will happen and he will get hurt again, maybe not the hip, something else, and he will not be able to finish his career on his own terms. It will be due to his injuries. Now, when I looked at Rafa's draw in Brisbane, I wasn't sure whether he's going to win the first round but then once he showed that his level was really high I thought that he was going to make it into the semis and I did not think that he was going to beat Dimitrov. Why? Because Dimitrov has been on absolute fire lately. So if you watch some of my later rants last year you know that I reported on Dimitrov's unbelievable form. So in 
Shanghai, which was in October, he took out Alcaraz, which is unbelievable. He made it to the semis of that tournament, which is a Masters, where he lost to Rublev. And then in Paris, he took out Musetti, Medvedev, Bublik, Hurkacz, Tsitsipas, before losing to Djokovic in the final. And now this year, he started with a bang by winning Brisbane. He took out Rune, who is definitely out of his slump. He's playing a lot better. That's another thing I talked about last year. Rune was losing a lot of consecutive matches. He's playing a lot better. He's going to be in the mix to win big titles in 24. But Dimitrov played a fantastic match and won his first tournament since 2017. Now, when you look at a player like Dimitrov, especially with the elegant style that he has, very reminiscent of Federer, you couldn't think of a better player. He has everything that you need at the very top of the game. But... I think what Dimitrov suffered from was that he couldn't break through the top of the game. He would play well, but ultimately he couldn't take out the big guys at later stages of the tournaments. However, I will say that if there was ever a time where Dimitrov could win a big title, maybe a Master Series tournament or maybe a Grand Slam or maybe even the Australian Open, it would be now. There was also a tournament in Hong Kong which Rublev won and I'm so surprised when I see how many titles Rublev has won. This was his 15th title. That's a lot of title guys for a young guy like Rublev. So I think what's missing with him is to some effect very similar to Dimitrov where he plays extremely consistent. He plays well. He did win his first Master Series tournament last year in Monte Carlo. But he always kind of comes up short at very late stages of the tournaments against the top guys. But he absolutely has the level to do something really big. So currently the best four players in the world are Medvedev, Sinner, Akaraz and Djokovic and these are going to be the guys that are going to be the favorites for the Australian Open. Now interestingly Sinner, Akaraz did not play last week and they're also not entered into the 250s that are taking place this week and I think this is a scheduling mistake and I'm going to tell you why. Yes Sinner has a lot of confidence because he played deep into last year by winning the Davis Cup. Medvedev played an exhibition in India. Akaraz played an exhibition against Djokovic a few weeks back. But I think when it comes to Australia specifically, the climate is so different. They're in the middle of summer where it's super hot and these guys are coming from Europe. I think it makes a lot of sense to go there and play a few matches and acclimate to the conditions. In my opinion, when you don't play a warm-up tournament in Australia, out of all the places where you should play a warm-up tournament, there would be Australia. And it's going to be interesting to see how Sinner, Akaraz and Medvedev perform in the early rounds of the Aussie Open. Now for me, the dark horse for the Australian Open is going to be Alexander Zverev, who just won the United Cup and he played the most inspired tennis of his career in that tournament. He was not necessarily playing the best tennis of his life, but he was fighting like crazy. So at the United Cup, which for you guys that don't know, is a combined event, kind of like the Hopman Cup, where you have a men's match, a women's match, and then the mixed. So. Zverev in the first match took out Manorino 6-3 in the third, then he took out Sonego 6-4 in the third, then he quite comfortably beat Tsitsipas 4-4, four four. then he lost to Dimenauer who was on absolute fire, Dimenauer took out Djokovic 4-4 four and, four. and then Zverev in the final of the United Cup saved match points against Hurkacz and won 6-4 in the third. Now he also had unbelievable mixed matches going deep into the third set super tie break and he clinched the title with his mixed partner Laura Siegemund who's an unbelievable doubles player from Germany also a great singles player she won the Stuttgart tournament a few years back and they beat Sviantek and Hurkacz in the final to win the United Cup so I think Zverev is going to draw a lot of confidence from this United Cup and he's going to be a player to deal with at the Australian Open. And let me quickly talk about the WTA and there are four players who are on absolute fire right now and any of these four could win the Australian Open but one is playing maybe the best tennis of her life and that's Rybakina. Let me read you her results from the tournament in Brisbane. So she beat Gadecki 4-1, she beat Mertens 1-0. Mertens is a great player, she only lost one game. Then she beat Potapova 6-1, retirement. She beat Noskova in the semis 3-2 and, and she absolutely destroyed Sabalenka 0-3 in the final. Now Sabalenka is also playing well, Iga is playing well, she won all her matches at the United Cup and Coco Gauff is playing extremely well, she won the tournament in Auckland. So the WTA it's very unpredictable. Anybody can win, but these four players that I just mentioned, they are playing the best tennis and they are the favorites for the Aussie Open. And my personal pick 
is Ribakina. And let me finish off by talking about Djokovic's current form. He didn't play his best tennis, obviously, because of injury, but we shouldn't put too much value in that because Novak Djokovic is the greatest big tournament player in the history of tennis. And it wouldn't surprise me if he would win the Australian Open again. He is, in my opinion, the favorite and my personal pick. What often happens with Djokovic's momentum or confidence is that he finishes a year extremely strong. He wins all those indoor tournaments, Paris and the World Tour Finals, and he carries over that confidence into the Australian Open. And then as the season goes on, he sometimes blasts through Indian Wells, Miami, but other times he might lose a few matches here and there. And then on clay, of course, he loses more, especially when Rafa was at his best. And then when Wimbledon comes around, Djokovic picks his confidence back up. So yes, there has been some seasons where Djokovic played lights out the entire year, but generally even when Djokovic plays his absolute best and finishes the year number one, it's not a straight line in momentum. It's still a little bit up and down. So despite the fact that he lost to center in Davis Cup, I think that Djokovic still has that confidence from finishing last year so strong and I do think that he's going to win this year's Australian Open.